Corn and soybeans. Many of us eat them in some form nearly every day in everything from cereal to the oil our fries are cooked in. They're also two of the most commonly genetically modified foods in the United States. So what exactly is genetically modified food and is it safe for us to eat? I'm Arnold Naidu in Washington, D.C., and this is The Heat. Genetically modified organisms, or GMOs, are a hot-button issue for consumers. Critics say foods made with genetic modifications are not safe or as nutritious as unchanged foods, while proponents say they're a solution to world hunger. But what exactly is a GMO? A genetically modified organism is just what it sounds like, an organism that's been genetically changed through artificial engineering to give it new traits. In food, that means plants may be altered to increase growth, or resist pesticides. For example, some genetically modified corn crops have been designed to resist insects, allowing farmers to grow it in areas they haven't been able to before. But the science isn't without controversy. While many countries, including the United States and China, have embraced GMO crops, other countries are not sold on the technology. Some countries have even instituted partial or full bans of genetically modified crops, including Japan, New Zealand, Venezuela, and many in the European Union. Also at issue in the GMO debate, labeling products that contain genetically engineered foods. Consumer concerns have more than 60 countries requiring foods containing GMOs be labeled. Despite the controversy, domestic and international organizations like the World Health Organization, the National Academy of Sciences, the UK's Royal Society, and the European Commission have all addressed risks of genetically modified foods and found no evidence that they're dangerous. Joining us now is Kathy Enright, the Executive Vice President of Food and Agriculture for the Biotechnology Industry Organization. Kathy, thanks for joining us. My pleasure. Thanks for having me. When we look at this debate over GMOs, it's a big debate and at times a very noisy debate. But in the midst of it all, you get companies like Monsanto branded as the bad guy. Why is that? I think it's easy to pick on the leader. Monsanto is the largest uh, GMO seed developer. Uh, certainly an innovative company, a large company, a multinational company. And I think that right now we're in a, an environment of big is bad, and therefore Monsanto takes most of the heat uh, with regard to GMOs. Well, let's look at the impact of genetically modified foods. Firstly, let's look at the impact on small farmers. Okay. Small farmers in the U.S.? In the U.S. around the world. I think with regard to uh, small farmers, they're really no different in their goal uh, than large farmers. The goal is to be profitable and to really create some uh, disposable income and to leave the land better than they found it. I think farmers, large, small, anywhere, want that. So with small farmers, particularly around the world, uh, internationally, outside of the US, what the adoption of biotech seeds has enabled them to do is to meet those goals. They're able to grow more. They're able to uh, use less land or more land. You know, I, I, I know about stories where small landholders, two or three acres now, they own 120 acres, use less inputs. By inputs, I mean fertilizer or pesticides, water. Uh, where they use tractors, they're spending less time on their tractors. And so for small farmers, biotechnology offers them another alternative or an alternative to uh, the farming practices and the seed choices that they're currently making. I'm wondering if the problem is one of education, because you know, all those factors that you just mentioned right now, they're very commendable. You know, they, more food, more nutritious food, and all that. But the conventional view, when you talk to the man on the street or the woman on the street about GMOs, they say, well, it's bad for you because They've uh, basically manipulated with the food and they've manipulated the seed and it's ultimately going to be bad for your health as well. Right. We've heard that a lot. And I think what's happened is that uh, the, the folks who are uh, opposing the technology and the companies really have done a great job using digital space to um, express their opinions. And I think that's what people see if they Google or, mm -hmm. or uh, search for information about genetic modification. The fact of the matter is, when we talk with folks about the, that technique, no one really knows what it is. I mean, if you're a scientist like myself, 
or you're a farmer, certainly you might know, but the average man, woman on the street doesn't really understand what that means, that it is an extension of, of traditional seed breeding. It is our most precise, accurate method of seed breeding. Now, uh, the biotech industry in some countries facing lawsuits, facing legal action from uh, some farmers, especially in Argentina and in Canada as well. Um, how do you defend that? I can't speak for them. Yeah. I can't speak for them. Well, all, I, all I can do is, is um, you know, folks have a right to raise a claim, right, right from either side. And so I'm going to let the companies and the courts uh, adjudicate those those challenges. Okay, now the biotech industry itself has done a lot of research into the efficacy of GMOs, into its safety, etc. What has that research shown us? The research has shown us that uh, there is no new issue or concern, health, safety, environmental concern raised by the adoption, the production of GMO seed. And not only is it our studies Right, where someone might call those into question because they're funded by the companies, but hundreds and hundreds of independent studies have confirmed this, uh, including a decade's worth of research uh, conducted by the European Union governments. Right? They came to the same conclusion. There's not a new issue raised here. Right. Another big issue that we're hearing about a lot, and that is labeling, that you know, whatever the food uh, is, you know, we have to know how it came to be that. You know, if it was genetically modified food, then the labeling has mm -hmm. to show that. Mm -hmm. Why is there such a controversy over that? I think it's the how the information is provided. We absolutely support a consumer's right to know, right? Mm -hmm. I want to know what's in my food. Mm -hmm. I might be interested in, in um, how it's made. So if I'm looking for that information, I need to know where to go to get it. It has to be accessible. The challenge that we have as an industry with the demands for labeling as they currently stand is that they're really meant to prejudice a seed breeding technique and a, a production system of, of farming that we're proud to be a part, of, a part of and we support it. So I think the conversation has to uh, mature. I think we can work together to find ways to provide that information, but a mandatory label that, in our opinion, conveys that the food that is grown from crops produced from our seeds is somehow less than, less nutritious, less safe, uh, less healthy, we can't support that. We have to find another way. Well, I guess then it's not the label. It's actually educating people about what you believe to be a very nutritious food. Uh, it's got to the stage now where you have some states uh, here in the United States that are legislating for this. Yeah, we do. And it's that's curious. I mean, uh, the sentiment from the folks who are proponents of labeling is very compelling, right? And it's, it's very effective. Assertions made about health and safety claims uh, take a few minutes to refute, a few minutes to explain, right? And as I said, folks not understanding what GMOs are, it sounds scary. I look on the internet, it looks pretty scary, so maybe I want, I want to know. But if there's a health or a safety issue, a concern about a food, it shouldn't be labeled, it shouldn't be on the market, right? So we certainly are trying to work with the states to help educate them and provide information to help assuage concerns. And one of the things that our industry did last year was to launch an effort uh, called GMO Answers. Again, we think people should know, and it was our commitment to an open, transparent dialogue about GMOs, about how your food is grown, about our companies and our practices, including Monsanto's where folks are invited to ask any question, and we have independent third-party experts who will answer those questions, and we have company experts, such as myself, who put their name and their photo to, to questions that are asked. In addition, I travel all over the country uh, and will meet with any group that, has, uh, that is interested in seeking more information about GMOs. It's a small step, but I think it's a really important step. We are committed to providing this information. I'm wondering to what extent, you know, the confusion arises because there are so many countries in the world that actually have legally mandated that they have those labels that show that these foods are produced from genetically modified seeds. They have, and the only, uh, the only curiosity about that is if you look at the labeling regimes, they're all different because they are really not based on science. They're based on, you know, a, a policy, a development of a policy that was meant to try to provide the information or try to assuage concerns 
of, of folks asking for those labels, but also not to hurt the domestic economies, not to disrupt the food supplies. So you'll see uh, in some countries, the labeling is based on whether there is a, um, a new trait in the food, right, or whether you can detect a new trait in the food, the process versus the product. There are thresholds, weight, volume, detectable, not detectable. They all look different. And it was just, I think, really a country's or the country's way of, of saying to themselves, we have an issue here that we need to respond to. Let's respond, but let's not do it in a way that hurts or disrupts our domestic food supply. One final question. When you shop, do you shop at organic markets or do you eat genetically modified foods? You know, I'm a proponent of agriculture, whether it's GMO, conventional, or organic. As a mom and a scientist, right, I understand that there's not a nutritional or a safety difference. So I shop by taste, by price, by the way something looks. Any market that offers me that, I'll go into. Dr. Kathy Enright, thanks for joining us. Of course, it's my pleasure. Thanks for having me. And we are going to take a break right now. Coming up, the other side of the debate over genetically modified foods with an anti-GMO environmentalist. Stay with us. You're watching The Heat.